The Star Working Group 5 had highlighted the overlap of the RSC framework with the USP graduate outcomes. And now, five years into implementation, we've got 78 undergraduate level courses that are using the RSC informed marking rubrics. Also, this year, the marking criteria for the USP, sorry, the um, graduate outcomes, the criteria for the USP graduate outcome rubrics have been revised to ensure clarity of language, coherence, developmental progression across the undergraduate years, and feasibility of being assessed. So, it is in fact an opportune time for us to explicitly map the marking criteria of the RSC informed marking rubrics that have been used for some time with the revised USP graduate outcome criteria. Uh, coincidentally, as I speak today, the revised USP graduate outcome criteria is uh, going through the academic programs committee meeting for their endorsement to then go on to um, approval by USP Senate. So the research question is, can RSC informed marking rubric assess the revised criteria for USP graduate outcomes? Now I will hand over the presentation to my colleague Shazna. Hi everyone, so um, can you hear me at the back? Yes. So uh, we used a qualitative content analysis approach. Uh, this is a bit different from the quantitative um, content analysis because uh, it recognizes that the coding, the coding categories can be an interpretive or qualitative uh, process. It's slightly subjective um, than the quantitative version of this. Okay, so we used a descriptive design because instead of creating our own coding categories, we used the existing uh, descriptors or criteria for the seven USB geos. Okay, um, we then use the RSD informed rubrics and mapped it for the appropriate level. That means, um, if you remember our geos, there's um, a benchmark, milestone, and capstone level. So we mapped it across to the geo rubric. Now, in terms of uh, analyzing, we looked for an explicit description. So at times, at times, um, we felt that it might be implicitly assessed within the rubric, in the RSD informed rubric, but what we were looking for was an explicit expression of this. Okay, so out of the 48 rubrics that are available on the RSD website, we um, selected 10. Okay, these are the peer review. There are 78 courses that have applied to some extent RSD within um, their assessment. But only 48 of them have been peer reviewed and they're published on the RSD website. Okay, so we selected 10. We use a stratified sampling method. So we firstly divided the rubrics by the faculty and then selected two, randomly selected two from, the, um, from each faculty. And then we also purposefully included the four um, compulsory courses. We did the four UU courses. And our sample had a great diversity of um, assessments. So there are a huge variety. And you'll see some of this in our qualitative um, results. So what did we find? Let's go to the results. Okay, so some of the geos were very well assessed. You can see communication, 90% or 9 out of the 10 rubrics assess communication. Uh, critical thinking and quantitative reasoning, 100% all of them were assessing this. Okay, quite a geo. Uh, professionalism, 100%. Okay, and then we had uh, creativity sitting at 50%, specific consciousness um, sitting at 40% and teamwork at 20%. Also recognize that not all of these courses must be assessing all the geos, okay? Because seven um, courses would be targeting specific geos, okay? Not all seven. So this is what we found in terms of our analysis. Now let's look at the sub-criteria. Now four of the seven um, geos, the graduate outcomes, have sub-criteria. And in terms of analysis of sub-criteria, we found that with communication, um, one of the uh, identified RSD informed rubric did not assess context and audience, which is the first criteria. Okay. Um, one, again, rubric did not assess clarity of expression and coherence. And there were two that did not assess um, presentation and appropriate use of ICT. For the creativity, we found that um, one of the rubrics that we identified that assessed this geo did not assess formulation of new approaches or methods of inquiry. 
Okay, and in terms of critical thinking and quantitative reasoning, we um, remember I mentioned that all of the arts um, aligned rubrics were assessing this particular geo, but we found that half of them did not assess quantitative reasoning. And for those of you who have um, worked on this new um, rubrics, you notice that this is something that was just introduced within the critical thinking and quantitative reasoning uh, rubric. Okay, um, something really interesting emerged with specific consciousness. We found that of the four RSC aligned rubrics that were assessing specific consciousness, one did not assess respect for cultural, cultural heritage and diversity of Pacific societies. Okay, and this is the criteria one. And two of the rubrics did not assess a third criteria, which is integration of traditional and contemporary practices to sustain Pacific societies. So it was really one of the four that assessed all three criteria. Okay, so I'll hand this over to Hina, who um, shares some of our coping processes and the way we try to align the two, the RSC rubrics and the graduate outcomes. Now, we only have a selection of these because of time constraints. Yeah. So, uh, we will actually discuss uh, three of the graduate outcomes, as Shasta mentioned due to time constraints. For creativity, the graduate outcome statement is that graduates will extend boundaries of current knowledge in a particular discipline or profession. For this, we have uh, chosen UU200 cartoon emphasis assignment. And then creativity has got two criteria. The first one is formulation of new approaches or methods of inquiry. Now, we found that this is very well reflected in the cartoon assignment as students have to make meaning out of the cartoon, so they have to read and interpret the cartoon. And then criterion two is innovative application of knowledge and skills. Now, again, this is reflected in the cartoon assignment because there's a criteria that says analysis of cartoon using anthropocentrism and biocentrism. And the specific criteria is provide original insightful information on all three theoretical perspectives. Now that maps onto the facet analyze and synthesize in the RSC framework. Then there was another UU200 uh, criteria that said link to global governance, original insightful, and that maps onto evaluate and reflect. So then moving on to critical thinking and quantitative reasoning. This is the, the next graduate outcome, uh, graduate outcome. And the outcome statement is that graduates will be able to evaluate multiple perspectives and arrive at a reasonable independent judgment based on evidence. Now, this particular outcome has got four criteria. And we found that all the four criteria are well covered in UU 114 course. The first criteria is on information literacy. Now, all the RSC facets cover this. For example, in the very first uh, facet, embark and verify, they, the criteria is coverage of terms of reference. And then we've got methodology and data collection and define and generate conclusions and evaluate and reflect. The format, presentation of results under organize and manage, discussion of results, that's the passage, analyze and synthesize, and then recommendations covered by communicate and apply. The second criteria under the same outcome is management of multiple perspectives. This is covered under discussion of results and recommendation. Third criteria, judgment based on evidence. Again, conclusion covers that well. Then criteria for quantitative reasoning. Now we find that even this criteria is covered in view one and four because it looks at wide range of appropriate data and define and generate data effectively integrated into text under organize and manage, and then accurate interpretation of data under analyze and synthesize. So the next outcome, ethics. Ethics, the outcome statement says that graduates will demonstrate a commitment to high ethical standards in scholarly, professional, and social cultural practices. Course that we've chosen is CH203 laboratory report. And the laboratory report covers the ethics criteria um, through a few uh, assessment criteria. 
Why use the use of credible references and sources and calculation of errors in data and proper logbook for results and calculations? Now I will hand over my colleague Charles now for the rest of the presentation. Okay, so we've had to skip a few um, slides just to meet the time requirement. Now, um, some of the limitations of our project um, was that we had obviously time constraints, as all of you will appreciate here. Um, and so we were not able to access the, um, the assignment questions, and obviously knowing the background of their assessment would have given a better idea of what the course coordinators were assessing. Okay, um, there were only two of us working with this project. And there were times when we disagreed whether a coding could be applied to a particular rubric. And having a third person would have been great as a tiebreaker, but again, very difficult to get somebody on board at this time of the year. Okay, um, and again, due to time constraints, we could not purposefully look at those geos that were not being covered within our analysis, for instance, specific consciousness was not that well covered within our sample. Now, what we could have done was look for a course that set out to assess specific consciousness and then look, um, basically, go through that particular RSC aligned rubric. Due to time constraints, we're not able to do that, okay? But with the one that we found, there were all three criteria that were really, um, met. Okay, so, but the good news is, for those of us who have been working on the RSD rubrics, we can continue to use them. So the selected RSD um, informed rubrics can be used to assess the revised ESG geos. Okay, uh, some geos like communication, critical thinking, ethics, and professionalism, they are covered very well across all the courses, okay? Um, now with critical thinking, well, all courses covered it. Um, quantitative reasoning, which is, some, uh, is a new addition to the revised rubric that was not being covered by 50% of the courses. But oftentimes we found that you know, a simple tweaking of the RSD rubric would see the coverage of this. And again, we were looking for explicit expressions rather than implicit ones. So at times we felt that quantitative reasoning could easily be covered in this particular course, but we did not map it obviously because it was not explicit. Okay, um, teamwork and specific consciousness were only covered by two and four courses. Okay, but again, um, it may be the case that their course coordinators never set out to assess those geos. Okay, so a purposeful selection of more um, rubric that would assess these geos would have been useful for this um, study. Okay, um, the, but again, the two take home messages for us and I guess for anybody else who's working on this. Firstly, that yes, you can continue to use um, your RSD rubrics for assessing the new GOs. Okay, this mapping exercise can also be useful for the course coordinators who are using it. Okay, RSD aligned rubrics to see whether um, GOs, the revised GOs, map onto their rubric, and if there are gaps, they can address these gaps. Um, the second great thing is that those um, course coordinators who do not have a rubric but have to assess certain geos, they can um, use the already available RSD rubrics, okay, and um, apply that to their courses. So with that, thank you for listening, and I think that we're going to